Wealth has a certain look, and it could either be extravagance or simplicity. For a long time, there have been conversations about how old money and new money can be told apart just from appearance. New money has been labeled as flashy and not particularly elegant, while old money is thought to have a quieter and more admirable vibe. Many people strive to achieve the whole old money aesthetic these days, regardless of what class of wealth they come from. But where does this idea that quiet luxury is peculiar to old money come from? And is this really the case? Welcome to Luxurious Times. And in this video, we'll be talking about quiet luxury. We'll talk about what it means, how it relates to old money aesthetics, and how society is embracing it today. Make sure to stay till the end, as we will discuss whether only rich people can pull off the so-called quiet luxury, or whether normal people like you and I can. The word luxury has been used to describe virtually everything in society these days, places, cars, houses, etc. Although it is a severely overused word, we can all agree that in any context that it is used, luxury refers to something costly that can be afforded by a certain group of people in society, that is, the wealthy. Given how superficial our society is, people tend to be obsessed with displays of wealth and luxury. However, recently, a new concept of luxury is rapidly taking over the minds and preferences of people. I'm talking about quiet luxury. The idea behind this new trend is that one doesn't have to be flashy or extravagant to exude luxury. Therefore, the focus is shifting from bling jewelry and over-the-top prints and designs to a more minimal aesthetic. The surprising thing about this new trend is that the concept of quiet luxury has been around for a while, but now, everyone is suddenly interested in the topic. According to Google Trends data, searches for quiet luxury has increased by over 600% in the past year. Of all times in history, for everyone to decide to make such a grand lifestyle change, it's a little bit ironic that it's happening in the generation known as Gen Z, known for thriving off attention and making huge statements. So why now? Why does everyone suddenly prefer beige, gray and understated outfits to vibrant colors and logos? What changed? Well, since the pandemic restrictions began to ease up in 2021, the economy has become precarious, and just like the era of the Great Recession, People's fashion sense has also changed. Given the economy's instability, people suddenly don't feel comfortable flaunting their wealth. Another reason is the hit HBO series Succession. The topic of quiet luxury resurfaced after the first episode aired, and the subtle but expensive fashion styles of the show's cast members had everything to do with it. Characters on the hit show usually wear cashmere baseball caps worth about $600, clothes in neutral colors with Sans logos and Tom Ford sunglasses, which are very expensive but subtle. No one can say for sure which of these two factors is responsible for the trend, or if they're even the only factors at play here. But a revolution is happening for sure, and very fast. Quiet luxury might be trending now, but it's not a new concept, and the fact that it's trending doesn't make it easy to grasp. According to a Vogue article, quiet luxury is more of a mood than a trend, which is spot on. However, this mood everyone suddenly feels simultaneously might be a back-to-the-basic feeling. The idea of making luxury look as minimal as possible might be an inspiration from past generations of wealthy people. For a long time in our society, many people believed that the more wealth you flaunt, the more enviable you're considered. And as time passed, people wanted to show off more. Everything became crazy and tacky, especially in fashion, house furnishing, travel, and other areas. For several years now, vintage styles and items are now seen as a reminder of when quality and timelessness were prioritized over appearance and how much more elegant and simpler things were back then. What does old money aesthetics look like? In terms of real estate, for example, old money families build their houses differently from a self-made wealthy family. To an old money elite, the perfect home is centered around minimalism, vintage designs, family heirlooms passed down for generations, and timeless furniture. Rather than building properties in popular areas like Los Angeles, they could develop their estates in suburban neighborhoods like Martha's Vineyard and the Hamptons. These neighborhoods are popular choices mainly because that's where many rich people from previous generations bought their land. Since old money is inherited, it makes sense that their children inherit these lands and build houses familiar to the minimalist but grand houses they grew up in. Another distinct thing about homes owned by people with old money is that they are furnished with antiques and old photos, decorated with calming color tones, and have lots of space for hobbies like horseback riding, farming, and the like. 
In terms of fashion, the old money aesthetic is characterized by their minimal effort to show off and more emphasis on classiness. The wardrobe of a person with old money is, no doubt, expensive. But rather than flashy items, it'll contain pieces like crisp linens, polo shirts from designers such as Ralph Lauren, designer purses, shoes, and sunglasses without huge logos. For holiday destinations and activities, old money aesthetics would look like sailing on the French Riviera, sipping champagne on a fancy island off the grid, winter holidays in the Swiss Alps, etc. An old money holiday would involve bonding between family members or just a couple in destinations other travelers don't crowd. This generation is trying to bring back simple and understated choices, but old money aesthetics covers more than just the aesthetic part. It is a way of life, but does quiet luxury capture what old money aesthetics is? Is it trending as an aesthetic goal or a way of life? We've already talked about how big of a trend quiet luxury is today and how it aims to mimic old money aesthetics as much as possible. However, this new trend is focused on the fashion scene mostly. The main aim is to discourage the purchase of any clothing item that says, I paid a lot of money to get this. That means removing designer bags with huge logos, designer shirts with signatures printed all over them, or designer clothes with elaborate designs and prints. It also means embracing more elegant pieces rendered in neutral tones, properly coordinated colors, wool overcoats, cashmere sweaters, silk button-downs, bespoke suits, classy shoes, simple cuts, and other minimalist designs. As ordinary as these clothing items sound, it doesn't mean they're cheaper than their flashy alternatives. Many of them are even more expensive. Contrary to what most people think, the goal of quiet luxury is not to spend less. Let's talk about Mark Zuckerberg's fashion, for example. Ever since becoming a public figure, his fashion sense has been the same, well, for the most part, as it includes a basic t-shirt paired with basic shorts. Looking at him, it's easy to think his t-shirts were from an affordable brand like Zara, costing tens of dollars each at most. But that's not the case. In reality, Mark's shirts are custom-made by luxury fashion brands and do not cost $20 each. Other A-list celebrities who pull off the quiet luxury look like Sophia Ritchie, David and Victoria Beckham, Gwyneth Paltrow, George Clooney, and many more. Most do not pay less to look as good as they do. This new trend might be a simpler look, but the notion that it is a cheaper alternative is ridiculous. Besides, as the demand for quiet luxury increases, luxury brands will likely increase the price tags of items in this category. However, not all luxury brands are in a position to benefit from this lifestyle change. Fashion houses like Louis Vuitton, Dior, Gucci, Versace, Fendi, and many others are already asked how quickly they can harp on the trend. Still, some fashion houses can benefit from this trend, including Hermes, Armani, Brunello Cuccinelli, The Row by the Olsen Sisters, Jill Sander and Loro Piana, and these are just a few of them. These brands have been creating quiet luxury designs long before they even became popular, but their designs are costly. For example, a cashmere sweater from Loro Piana costs almost $2,000 and a second-hand Hermes bag starts at $5,000, so you can only imagine how much more expensive the newly made ones are. You may think that the price tag of these items makes the trend unsustainable, but if there's one thing about quality materials, they always stand the test of time. Besides, their target customers can afford them, so that's not an issue. It also helps that rich people love investing in durable, sustainable, and timeless items, not clothing that will become irrelevant in two years or fall apart after three washes. The good thing about quiet luxury in fashion is that it is achievable without breaking the bank. Big fashion houses are not the only manufacturers of minimalist clothes. They're available at thrift markets and several online stores, so throw on a little confidence and some sunshades, and you'll see anyone can hop on the quiet luxury trend. On a final note, old money goes beyond aesthetics. Aesthetics can't be used to judge anything these days. Old money is not a trend, it is a lifestyle. And quiet luxury is society's way of mimicking one of the characteristics of that lifestyle. Quiet luxury might be the most interesting fashion trend we've seen in a while, but like all trends, it is just a part of a cycle. Something else will come up in the next couple of years and everyone will talk about it. On the other hand, old money aesthetics have been around for much longer and will still be around when everyone has forgotten about this trend. There's no denying that quiet luxury does share some similarities with old money aesthetics, but it is just a small part of a much bigger concept. What are your thoughts on quiet luxury? Please leave your comments below and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.